Okay. So we're live. Welcome to Gehenna Gaming's Wrath and Glory stream with Darker Days Radio. So yes, this will be technically episode three. No, episode three. Yes. We have episode zero of character creation. Yeah. But this is story number two. Mm. So we are joined by the regular cast of characters. So I'm one of the Darker Days Radio hosts, Chris, and I am joined by Ian from Gehenna Gaming. Hello. Welcome. And I'm joined by David from Darker Days Radio and Dark Hammer, our sister podcast that covers all things World of Warhammer. And I'm joined mm. by Crystal. And I'm joined <laughs> by Mike. Hey. And I'm joined by Chig in hey video guys. form. <laughs> one night only. Wait, hopefully not one night only. Excellent. Don't jinx so, this old camera. Um, we will be picking up a brand new story which carries on from the events of the previous story that was known as Descent. So this story is called Sleepwalker. So if you've watched the previous episodes, great. If you haven't, please go back. Uh, after the stream and you can uh, you know catch up on them I believe all episodes are now on YouTube as well uh, or they will all be on YouTube uh, and David's gone disappearing for a little bit uh, I don't know what he's had to do but we will we will get started in a moment once he's sat back down uh, he is sat back down excellent sorry right. uh, things crashing around the house yeah um, right so uh where to begin it it we are still on the world of caribbean and you are still on hive Iden. for the past few weeks you have been guests of the acting governor of the planet and uh yes you you are simply enjoying life as guests of the governor and of the nobility there because you are representatives of the rogue trainer, trader Lord Veronius, and uh, you are the, also have in orbit uh, the the ship which brought you there, which is which is captained by his cousin Severina Veronius. Uh, so, um, what have you been? Got, what will your your characters uh, be doing uh, in these few weeks as guests on Hive Iden? There are numerous places you could potentially visit. Uh, there is obviously ecclesiarchy temples there are all manner of things you could possibly get up to who wants to jump in on that uh i think rufio has just been complaining the entire time i mean the rogue trader just ditched us here what do we do wrong you know we solved the crime kind of well, you're not really ditched you're 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 being left there to observe and make sure Indeed. there's a smooth transition of power that may be the case, but that's not Rufio's perception. Right. So I'm sure uh, Rufio, the uh, the beast man, has been um, complaining and, let's say, drinking a lot. Okay, so you've possibly been going below high, uh, below the wall, oh, uh, potentially to some of the more, you've possibly learned of some of the more illegal um, dens, some of them that sell uh, Obscura, which is a form of narcotic. Uh, things like that. I think actually, do you not Maybe. have a have a, a in a someone has in a in a can in a, a small casket a obscure stick? Is that what you no. have? Uh, no, it's a um, it's not obscure. It's it's one of the other drugs. Yes, but yeah, don't don't tell anyone. Don't tell the enforcers. No, don't don't tell the commissar because it's <laughs> yeah, it's illegal anyway. Um, right, what else is anyone up to while they've been enjoying time from, well, you're not really enjoying time off duty, you just nothing, no real pressing matters to attend to. Uh, I, sorry, go Sister, Sister Mariana would like to uh, visit whatever, whatever holy shrines might be here on the planet, you know, bask in the glory of, uh, the Emperor's light. Mm -hmm. Of course, yeah, there will be, um, there will be on Hive Island, there, there is an Ecclesiarchy temple uh, with all manner of relics from heroes of past, of, of saints, potentially. Uh, and there is a, you, you've had the joy of visiting a small, one of the smaller islands, which is given over, totally given over to the Ecclesiarchy and is a place of, of worship. The entire island is just one great temple to the god emperor of mankind 
It's basically Disneyland for Sister Mariana. Yeah, she it is. Loves it. You know, it's it's all about you know they 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 have various pieces of artwork. There's there's depictions of the Emperor slaying some dragon like entity coming from the oceans, which is obviously representative of the turmoil and uh, dangers of chaos. But also, it's literal. That really happened. Hundred percent. Potentially, it could could be a literal <laughs> representation um, or somewhere. Maybe not on uh, Caribbean itself, but on some other world. But yes, it is a uh, it is a wonderful piece of artwork. Which uh, there are, you know, you walk past a throng of like literally thousands of thousands of people that are waiting to go into the temple to worship it, and you walk past since you are a member of the ecclesiarchy. You are one of the warriors of. The holy, you know, the holy church to the god emperor. Someday, maybe if they are very lucky, they can lay down their life for the god emperor as well. Maybe. Yeah, indeed. Uh, anyone else? Uh, Danico would be doing uh, uh, tours and inspections of uh, different type, the different types of um, operations that are going on on the planet, and talking with the um the nobility and any of the uh politicians there basically uh, yeah uh doing the uh uh political envoy type of thing and seeing if anybody catches my interest yes uh you will have the chance of inspecting uh various you know platoons of the adept of the um, Astro Militarum that are based on in High Viden. Uh, you get to witness them, you know, parading around. There's a small parade of uh, of their of their vehicles, of their of Lehman Russ battle tanks going down a boulevard. Uh, these things happen every so often. Uh, you, but yes, you, you get to inspect those. Uh, the the, the, the local legion is known as known as the Caribbean claws. Uh, they have they have emblems which are crab-like claws with with swords and guns, depending upon which platoon you're looking at. But you get the idea of the the imagery of it. Uh, and yes, you know you're 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 shown around those. You're shown other installations. Uh, you're shown the training training grounds for the enforcers, which keep the local law, uh, while obviously. Uh, the the soldiers of the of the legions will at some point be taken off world to participate in some crusade somewhere or to some god forsaken battlefield where the lifespan of the reg of a regular imperial guardsman on the front line is fifteen minutes if they're lucky. And who else wants to jump in? Well. Um... <laughs> Weir would be um, self-flagellating, uh, <laughs> meditating, <laughs> and um, likely working with uh, the Commissar or Sister Mariana to a certain degree um, in case any heresy needs to be taken care of. Uh, yeah, I'm it. sure you, you mostly... Weir, Weir would be welcome with any of my events yeah and i'm sure you also visit the the shrine island uh you know witnessing this grand of course uh temple this cathedral that is all alone in the oceans uh yeah that's that's a good way of spending your time and david what's id4 trying up to um <clears throat> probably gone down to speak to the magos uh hang out with uh the tech priest down there um update uh, her routines and things, but probably quite careful not to download much of her own network. Yeah. For various Excellent. reasons. So, um, let's see what happens. So, yes, this this you 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 have a, a fairly easy time for the the next few weeks until late at night. Your data slate. Uh, Commissar Danica, your data slate as you're asleep pings and you have a message there. And it is one from Lord Veronius. He needs to uh, speak to 
the the uh, team immediately. All right. Now you'll have all been given temporary accommodation in the uh, upper hive, uh, similar to the apartments uh, that the nobility have. Uh, they have various collections inside of of um, you know, there's a there's a small library in your apartment that's been given over to you. Uh, a, there's some clothes that have been provided for you to wear when you're off duty, um, and there's a balcony that looks out over to, over the rest of the upper hive, and you can see the the gardens and and various mazes that are made to make it look you know appealing and opulent to visitors. So it's it's pretty pretty amazing to be there, unlike when you've been spending hours, days, weeks, months, years aboard ships or on battle, uh, you know, on the front lines at battlefield. So you are living it, living it really well right now. I guess you'll call for the others to attend, uh, to attend you in, in your apartment. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and yes, I guess when they all arrive, you know, you can, there are you know, there are plush um, sofas to sit upon. Uh, there are various refreshments you can you can uh, partake of. There are servitors attending to you that t simply take your order or tidy things away as you're eating and drinking. And you are able to plug in the data slate into the hollow mirror above the fireplace for the message from uh, Lord Veronius. So, uh, his image appears flickering on the on the mirror as it uh, displays displays himself in uh, head to toe. Once again, I require your expertise and courage. I have noted that you have done well since you've been here. You dealt with the uh, the events pertaining to Governor Veratio's uh, death, and you have I've uh, read your reports. Uh, as you've been observing the uh, comings and goings of nobility and, and industry on this world. I have learned there has been an outbreak of unexplained violence in the Lower Hive, an underhive district known as the Waterline. Two days ago, ordinary citizens began rioting, rampaging, even tearing apart other, other residents with their bare hands. I would not be surprised if you have not heard about this. Local law enforcement and, of course, the, the acting governor have strived to ensure this information is not getting out. Though, of course, you are not the only agents of mine on this world, and that is how I've learned about these events. This strange epidemic seems to be growing worse with each passing day. Uh, during these tense political times, extreme unrest is the last thing we need. Ganthet Veratio, the planetary governor, of course, is dead. And so we have, we cannot simply turn to the acting governor and the nobility to deal with these things appropriately. This world is far too important to fall into anarchy and despair. Therefore, it requires a new governor and intend to assure that succession now occurs smoothly and rapidly. If violence in the underhive spills out into other districts, of Hive Eyes, and it may, dis may trigger more displays of unrest across the planet and spell doom for a peaceful succession. My advisors suggest the violence may be linked to cult activity. I'm aware you have come into contact with a pleasure cult, or at least a cult of opulence. I've read your reports in depth, and I wish you to follow up on these leads. That is why I've tasked you with investigating. I've contacted I have a contact amongst the enforcers, which is how I learned of these events. And this, this contact is an enforcer in the Waterline District, a man, a man named Beer Sidaru. You are to make your way to the Waterline District, contact this enforcer, contact with mine, at station Alpha 6, and find out what is going on. You must find out the cause of this violence before it spreads or escalates. May the Emperor's light guide you. And the hollow vid ends. You are sat there late at night in this opulent apartment, possibly drinking, possibly not, possibly smoking, possibly not. Uh, what do you make of things? What do you make of this recent turn of events? I can be ready to go 
fester out those heretics in 10 minutes. Would I have visited the water line at all? Uh, unlikely, no. Okay. It's would under, I? It's, would um, I have visited it? Uh, <laughs> mostly not. You mostly have visited oh. some places that you know of more closer to the wall. You don't want to go too deep into the underhive without support. Yeah, that's a good point. <clears throat> Just to right. pull aside my cloak and check that I have my swords, which I do, so I'm ready to go immediately. Uh, I imagine Sister Mariana, when she is not in her power armor, is dressed in a simple nun's habit or something equivalent to that. Chick is muted currently. Yeah, you're muted. Absolutely, she can. She is, and she uh, she thinks she can be ready in about ten minutes if she if she hurries through her uh, you know her ritual of donning that armor. Oh yes, I'm sure there's a full ritual of adorning it, blessing your gun, blessing every bullet that goes into your bolt pistol. The works exactly, but she can she can bless the bullets on the way. Yeah, she's ready to go find her some heretics. Of course, because built into your armor, like most pieces of pa most power armor worn by the Sisters of Battle and the Space Rings, you have an auto reliquary, which simply sprays holy water onto bullets as on onto bolt gun rounds as you load them into your bolt pistol. Such is the way of the armor. Right. Um, excellent. I mean, ID four trans mostly likely to to ready to go. I mean, you don't you sleep as you um, are. I don't sleep. Yeah, I, yeah. No, you, you go into a yeah, you go into a low processor mode, don't you? <laughs> Pretty much just like oh, I've got nothing. Power to do. saving mode. Power saving. Yeah. <laughs> What's your screen saver? Um, ooh. safe flying coasters. Safe flying coasters. So just the X's. It's probably it's probably just the Imperial Inquisitor symbol just bouncing around in the screen. Yeah. Or Window one. It's just kind of boing boing boing. And Rufian just needs to simply pick up his gear. Yeah, I'm ready to go in uh, maybe nine minutes. Excellent. So, um, obviously, you you, um, you you take your time to get your equipment, get dressed appropriately, and uh, the easiest way down to the waterline is via one of the large transit carriages, similar to the ones that you, you, you use to get below the wall that carried um, the oh. algae uh, and this will take you down into the lower hive uh, potentially nowhere near the the black market that you attended originally in fact you're going further down than that into the into a deeper part of the hive of course this mass this mass uh, transit carriage is designed to carry large amounts of cargo up and down from the hive because they bring up arms and they take down a lot of raw materials that are brought from off world uh, and of course the spaceports are not accessible unless you're in the upper hive uh, the the carriage itself the, the this train system uh, has security of, of enforcers who check your your id of course you have letters of the mark which represent the fact that you work for a road trader you're a commissar they simply look at your badge and stand out of the way um they look at sister mariana's armor and you know they they nod in due respect because you are a representative of the ecclesiarchy and the holy god emperor uh you, so getting on the carriages there are very few questions even if they do glance at rufio and and and, and peer at what is under that hood like he he looks abhuman but how um they don't have time to ask questions and nor do they want to ask questions because it would seem rude uh, as they would be impeding a commissar and a sister of battle even even weir has his hood up over his gold filigree inlaid skull mask which hides his his scarred and blood and scarred face probably uh, freshly bloody as well Oh yeah, you've been whipping yourself. Yeah. So um, once you've sat down on this rickety carriage, uh, it heads off at a fast rate. Also carrying numerous workers, servitors, and goods, and heads down and down into the lower hive. And of course, as you go below the main um, main level, 
of the wall, you also pass through uh, the cloud banks which surround the upper hive, and then you're into the lower hive where it gets darker. You can see the storms outside. You can see um, that it. You can see far below at times the uh, the, the the wide, you know, deep o oceans uh, that are dark and foreboding, uh, and you descend hundreds and hundreds of levels, potentially going down almost. I'm going to say at this point, potentially somewhere in the region of a good mile or so, you, you go from the upper hive down. That is how tall the hive is. And eventually it comes to a stop. Uh, you, are on, you are still on the outside of the hive structure uh, and you, know, you can smell the sea air, you can feel the air against you and you can hear the crack of thunderclouds and storms around you. You are near the water. This is you are near the waterline region because essentially below you, only a few more levels is the waterline itself, is the oceans itself. So you're not that far from where the hive does carry on below, below the the um the you know below the water, below the water, and where there are still parts of the hive which exist though are at, you know at risk of flooding. Anyway, um, yeah, I mean, lots of things happen, like air pressure's different, there's condensation on the walls and ceiling, um, and, you know, there's the smell of salt, things are rusting, there is mildew, uh, people are gathered around uh, working, uh, carrying things, their clothes are all kind of either rusty equipment or their clothes are mouldering and, and decaying. And... Contrary to the reports of mostly what you were expecting, there seems to be no sign of dissent, no signs of rioting, no signs of unrest. In fact, other than the workers at the, at the main station, as you head into this district, into the waterline district, it becomes eerily deserted because most of the workers that you came down with you are working on the outside of the hive, you know, unloading and loading cargo. And those that came down with you seem like kind of wary that they want to go any deeper past the uh, station, outside of the station, outside of the cargo bays there, into the waterline district. Uh, I imagine, Rufio, you would be leading the way. I mean, this is kind of the type of world you're used to. Uh, it is, it is. But I think... Um... I think we should talk to a couple of the uh, the dock workers here, the uh, the, the uh, stevedores or whatever they are. Yeah, sure. Yeah, you know, see what we can uh, we can get out of them. Um, yeah, you yeah, find so, find a roustabout. Um, he's got bedraggled hair that's matted in uh, in dreadlocks. Uh, he's missing an eye, uh, but yeah, he he takes the time out from lifting some heavy goods, mostly barrels of Promethean. That are, that are mined from deep below the waves. Hey, how's it going? Uh, how's business been down here? You know, it seems like things are pretty busy. Busy? Well, it's no different to normal, but uh, yeah, it's a bit strange around here. Uh, I normally, tr we, we get brought down here to unload and unload. There isn't as much cargo as I was expecting. Uh, must be, uh, he kind of looks around shiftily these riots there's been there's been fighting down here i'm not meant to talk about it my my boss over there uh says we need to stay quiet about these things yeah yeah, yeah. listen don't worry about your boss we can take care of him if there's any problems but uh yeah we're kind of looking into these uh these riots uh it seems pretty quiet right now do they just you know flare up in the night flare up uh in the morning um what can you yeah. tell us about these? They just seem to come out of nowhere. Like suddenly, like like I watched. It was a few nights ago. And I was watch we were taking a break from our shift. And I just I just watched a friend of mine. They were chatting, they were they were having a, a sneaky sip of some Amasek, you know, to kind of take the edge off things. Mm -hmm. And out of nowhere, my mate turn on one of the other workers and he just swung swung the the wrench at his head and like they were best friends mm. yeah 
no um no history of, of violence or anything like that no, it was uh, so no relationship strange problems no yeah. oh, well yeah, it's pretty you weird. know it was uh yeah so my boss sorted things out they've been sent to confinement cubes to uh be uh to be reconditioned ready for work it was uh strange uh-huh. Yeah, you seen anyone talking to your boss? Anyone, I don't know, some enforcers, someone a bit more mysterious, anything like that? I've not seen anything else. That's why you'll notice no one's leaving leaving the uh, the cargo bay here. We're not going anywhere beyond. We've been told not to go beyond the. Uh, you see those enforcers over there? They they they're keeping watch. We're not meant to leave. Oh yeah, yeah. I see those enforcers over there. Hey, listen, you take it easy over here. We're gonna uh, we're gonna check around and see if we can get to the bottom of this. All right. Yeah, you, you hey, here's you a few credits for your, here's a few credits for your trouble. All right, oh, stay well. safe. Cheers. You uh may the god ember protect you. Yeah. All right. Team, team. Commissar, commissar, what do you think? I almost want to interview the uh the individuals that uh were in that altercation. Oh, we should go to their like detention center and uh Yeah. Yeah, talk to them. So we can. That's but uh. While we're here, we should look around and then go find them. They've mostly yeah. been detained in the same enforcer station, Alpha Six, in this district. Oh, so they are in this district. Yeah, they would have been right, taken perfect. by the enforcers for perfect. reconditioning. Okay. Yeah, I think you know what. I think you're right, Commissar. We should uh, go talk to them a little bit and uh, see what information we can get before we go down there into the hive. Because uh, once we're down there. These enforcers aren't going to give us any backup. Yeah. All right. Um, I will wait, walk wait, over. Wait. Th- those enforcers over there. Do you yeah. think that do you, do you think that they could they could do anything that we can't do with the divine light of the emperor shining through us? Do you think we would ever need their help? No, nah, not probably not. But I mean, there's always strength in numbers, and it's good to have, you know, meat shield. Yeah, meat shields exactly. Thank you, <laughs> thank you, ID Fortran. Flesh is weak. I'm confused. Isn't that Rufio's job? <laughs> for, for our group, yes. Not for them. Yes. Yeah, so why do we need them? <laughs> When but yes, we, should, goes down. we should go to the uh, the detainment center. Yes. Yeah. So you you head off into you know through through and over the uh, the past various carriages and trains over tracks, past large piles of cargo, past very shifty looking workers who all seem fearful of something like there's just something something in the air that they they sense something is wrong, and then you you're into the waterline district where you're heading down. The, the narrow corridors that lead to it. You know, there's, they're creaking, they're, they're groaning as the air from outside sweeps through them. And as you walk down these corridors, you know, it's very claustrophobic because you're, you're getting into the, into the real underhive. Uh, there are cables and pipes that are, that are hanging from, from uh, open grates above. There is, uh, you know, steam or, or water dripping from from various other pipes, which are rusted with age. And this network of corridors, you have to work your way through. There are sometimes larger openings that allow vehicles to move through, but you 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 have to go through this this maze of um, of of thoroughfares until you get to the main waterline dome itself. So I'm going to roll D6 here and re-roll if I get a six because I'm going to pick number four. Okay, Mike. <laughs> Shit. Me a D66. We got a 65. Probably, 65. Yeah, probably not good here. Okay. Meat shield, meat shield. <laughs> See, I told you he has a job. Yeah. Yep. Thank goodness it wasn't weird. Set the traps off for us. Let me just find. uh, Well, while we're walking down there, obviously, just ID is just going to be ID, and he's just going to have his all specs out, scanning 
Um, and hopefully that, that at some point your special actually do something useful other than fail miserably at everything it's ever attempted. Um, it's had the full new blessings of the Omnisire and, and, and sacred oils rubbed all over it. Um, both the Magos and the tech priests of, of the local temples have looked at it. And, and in, in theory, it should be working now and not just be utterly useless. So as you're walking along, um, you, you, you're walking along, you're in the main dome, you're going past, you know, again, the domes are various pieces of, you know, there are large factories, there are makeshift, you know, prefabricated buildings that will act as homes, that act as place of business, uh, act as like workshops and, and so forth for the people in this part of the hive. And again, it's desolate. There is nowhere, no one around. You see nobody walking around any part of this hive for the last 10, 20 minutes that you've been walking deeper into it. And that is profoundly weird. Yeah, this ain't right. And <laughs> Rufio, as you guys walk, walk along, you, you seem to not realize that Rufio's behind you stood still, looking up, his eyes glazed over. And Rufio, you see something. You're taken to another place. You see a dark spire reaching up towards the sky from the hive proper, wreathed in storm clouds, illuminated by lightning. The spire is a beacon, screaming out in rage and fear and pain to the heavens. You are terrified to go there, but you know you have no choice. You, and when you go there, you will see your home or your family again. And then you shake it away and you find that everyone else is stood just looking at you. Everyone, I have to go. I'm just going to bolt off into an alleyway, into the direction that I thought I saw the dark spire. Okay, so you, you're, yeah, you, you are appropriately freaked out and also disorientated. Uh, you don't know what you saw, uh, but you have this compulsion that you need to find that place. Yes, I'm going. What, what does anyone want to do then? Um, can I'm gonna Kenosa, I'm, Why do we keep him around? <laughs> I'm just gonna turn and look at the commissar for a second. Uh stop him, don't kill him. And I just I'm going to follow him. Okay. Full speed, rolling stealth if you want me to. <laughs> and what is Rufio doing? You find some you you've darted down an alleyway past various bits of uh, rubbish and refuse. Bumping in some boxes, maybe I have to clamber over a, uh, a, uh, some fencing. I look around, maybe I give out a bit of a bray uh, in my yeah. goat, goat like bray. And do I see where, where was the tower? Where was the spire? Where was it? You, you can't lost see it. it. You, don't know, you don't know where it was or what you were looking for. Question uh, for Rufio Rufio, how much metal do you have on your body? On your person? Um... Probably a little bit, but like not a ton. Like I've got, I got a chain swords. So that's that's pretty sizable. I've got a, uh, uh, a las pistol. So if you want to use your magnetic thing, you could probably use it on my chain sword because that's strapped to me. So who's following Rufio? We're Mariana is okay. following as well. Okay. I was just thinking, like I could just yeah use rice of magnetic. Rufio, magnetic. you you Open. enter go down an alleyway, not realising you've entered a building, a large chamber, possibly uh, just a warehouse. Uh, though it can't be a warehouse, but at least it's separated. It's a, it's a portion of the, it's another portion of the dome. It appears to be an open air market. There are stalls everywhere. Uh, there are collections of goods on various tables and tarpauling, you know, to keep the dripping of water from the, the roof above. And you stop there, and as you're joined by Weir and Sister Mariana, they also notice that there are dozens of people lying motionless on the ground, seemingly sound asleep. I rolled five icons for stealth as well. Okay, good. Super, super stealthy. Uh, Sister Mariana has stealth, but she's not bothering to use it right now. Um, she will put her hand on Rufio's shoulder turn him around to face her. Where where did you think you were going? 
I I can't really remember. Just I had this feeling and I had to run in this direction. I, I don't remember what I was looking for. But now that we're here, what the hell is going on? What's why are all these people on the ground? So yes, uh, there are there question. are a good dozen or so hivers all asleep on the ground. We should let know. them sleep. Sh- wait, <laughs> um, should we? <laughs> this is some evidence right here. Maybe we should like try to wake some. Maybe we should see if they're alive. I mean, some of them don't look like they're breathing here. Uh, well, that one's uh, snoring very loudly. Well, that one is, but uh, Rufio will get closer to uh, one of them that doesn't seem to be breathing as heavily and make sure that they're alive. They're Maybe, like, alive. Checks a pulse, but. You know, if you try and lift them up, you try and, you know, move them around, they just are still soundly asleep. Can, um, can I look around, ignoring the bodies, and see if there's anything else in this room? Uh, in this chamber, this is based on an open air market. It's just yeah. filled, you know, pe- the stalls have got various goods that are on sale to people, you know, various small arts you know small firearms there's you know equipment there are foodstuffs there's clothing uh you know anything could under hiver wants obviously for for your needs this is all complete crap um right. but there's nothing nothing that would have but nothing that would have caused like a bunch of people no. to fall unconscious no yeah does it seem like they just kind of fell asleep in place or yes. okay yeah, so like the shopkeep is just asleep behind his stall, etc. Okay. For those of you that didn't follow uh, Rufio, so that would be ID Fortran and, and Danica, who are still out in the main uh, street. Um, yeah, you you're walking along, and a pipe bursts and starts uh you know nearby a pipe bursts and starts spraying this dark brackish ice cold water um you know it splashes on you and uh you're going to both need to take a toughness test oh Dice ah, it's just toughness. Yeah. Um, uh, can I add for my coat and my armor? Uh, no. No. Okay. Fun. So one I've icon. got one one icon and one okay. exalted icon. That's fine. Yeah, you're you're soaked by this ice cold water, um, and though you you don't you you're not you you know, you you're not affected by it too much, but it does make it does chill you to your bones. You feel drowsy. What bones? Well, you do have bones underneath it all. Don't lie, ID four yeah. You still have some bones. Maybe not the bone that can't, no, 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 no. Um, <laughs> which is your skull. Um, no. Um, but yeah, you it just feels disconcerting, it makes you feel just cold to your very soul. I would say what soul is that yeah. water? Um, is it just, can, is it just water? It's just briny, no. cold, ice cold water. Um, Ugh. just for curiosity, I will just run a quick or specs over it just to make sure there's nothing grim in there like gribblies that could affect my circuits or cause any kind of illness towards Commissar Danica. Okay, those of you in the open air market, uh, what else are you up to? I suppose, Rufio, if you think it is something that we need to do, you can attempt to wake one of them. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, I guess, um, hey, hey, you, hey, hey, wake up, wake up, wake up. He Does doesn't seem to wake up, no. Oh, well, this is weird, um, 
Hmm. I'm given to understand that after a long, hard day's work, many of the underclass are very tired. I didn't realize they were quite this tired. That's a bit bit extreme. But uh, maybe we should uh, take him back to the group, to uh, the commissar. Great. Uh, I mean, you should probably carry them, you know, since you're in that uh, sweet power armor right there. Well, obviously, I'll carry them. As you're dealing with one of the uh, the sleeping uh, sleeping hivers, you spot out of the corner of your eye, Rufio and Sister Mariana, and obviously where you observe this from a slight distance because you're stealth cloaked in your blacker than black cloak. Um, a mad a madman naked, you know, holding a hatchet. He's covered in blood. He just leaps from from nowhere screaming and he launches himself at Rufio ah! and he charges towards you uh, right uh, either of you can act first because you weren't surprised by him so what do you want to do uh, chain, chain sword you can use the chain sword on him yeah, um, he is completely naked and armed you're only with a hatchet you're not going to get very much information out of him if you cut him in half no I'll just cut off his arm yeah, I was gonna say this like I'm just gonna take a leg. Maybe. But if he pulls the chainsword, I'll just let him take care of it. Is that so, really I mean, what you want wish to do? You just want to dismember him. I'm, I just, just wanna make take, sure. Just gonna take the arm off. Go on then, roll to him. Alright. Okay. Lord oh, lost evisceration. It's okay. Right. I have the Medicaid skill. I'll I'll stop the blood loss. <laughs> yeah, we'll put Let's the arm in some milk. We can reattach it later. Do a tourniquet or something. Um, yeah. So we're gonna make a quick roll here. I got four icons. So you've hit with plenty of successes. Uh, you can shift up to three of those icons into damage if you want. Uh, no, no. <laughs> we're we're doing a, a precise. Uh, Chain sorting right here. Yeah. Um, so it is a surgical instrument. A, what what damage does a chainsaw do? It does a lot. Uh, We're not even it does. Bother. It does five with four extra dice. Yeah. You you definitely you know swing it. The whirring blades shredding through his uh, his forearm, sending his the hat his hand holding the hatchet. It wheels through the air, gouts of blood everywhere, and the madman falls to the ground holding the stump of his hand, screaming in pain. He then just looks up at you with bloodshot eyes. I, I'm just the shopkeeper! And he just falls down like, you know, he's kneeling there crying in pain as blood pumps from, from the stump of his arm. A shopkeeper should not have charged at one of the Emperor's own. I don't know what's going on! He's just looking around. Ah, this... And he passes out with pain. So Sister Mariana will uh, lie him down and say, there, there, Lefty, and start treating his wound. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, so I guess... Do, do you uh, want me to roll for that? I, I do have no, the Medicaid skill. No, you don't need to roll for that skill. <laughs> doesn't, doesn't seem like it's, uh, you know, in the heat of yeah. combat or anything. Yeah. How So, uh, uh, Chick, do you think uh, Sister Mariana can like do a tourniquet and then Rufio will carry this guy to the enforcer station? He is much lighter now, yeah. So that's a good plan. <laughs> uh, I'll grab the arm too. Yeah. So, yeah, on, we'll... friend, on your or specs, you pick up a ping. You can hit, and you can also hear. It's an audio. You know, it's audio. You can yeah. hear something. You can hear someone praying nearby. So, kind of, does it give me a direction? Or... Yeah, you've got a direction. You can hear this. You can follow it if you want. Is it away from the other group? Yes. Oh, I'm fine with that. Um, I, I turn around to uh, Danica and goes, we have confirmation of target, that direction, here, chainsaw noises. I think Rufio is being enthusiastic. Suggest we we venture forward, find out this thing. Um, I am. I am gonna 
look and see if I can see where I doubt it, but <laughs> uh, I'm I assume he's around the corner in a different... I, yeah, I just assume that he's somewhere. Yeah. Um, and you, I guess you set off then looking for the yep. where this praying's come from. You can hear it as well, Commissar. Uh, you set off going down one street, down an alleyway. It always just seems just out of out of reach. You can hear it almost always echoes around you. You get turned around a few times, and then it becomes very apparent that you are very very lost. Oh shit. Query, right. where are we? Query, all specs not record data. Query, lost. Yeah, and the all specs starts to crackle on its green screen. <laughs> I hate all specs. I'm not going to have one. I'm going to give up on this one. <laughs> um, you can just hear screaming around the corner there's a there's a large you know cargo vehicle that's on the street before you and there seems to be some the sounds of fighting beyond it okay do they kind of have does it does, does the sound sound like the praying sound or is it does it actually sound like more realistic fighting? it sounds like fighting okay. i pull out my galvanic rifle and uh Politely in the way that a guitar would do. Commissar, I recommend you wait here for a second. I will check out this noise. Um, I suggest we don't leave sight lose sight of each other. I will just put my head around the corner. You'll see me. I pull out my bolt pistol. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you you set off and uh, ID Fortran as you peer around the corner, you witness in the street. Uh, amongst the prefab fabricated blocks, there are about a good two dozen or more hivers, all armed with, you know, hatchets, knives, clubs, makeshift flails, and they are butchering each other. But weirdly, they're not even making attempts to defend each other. They're literally just taking the hits from each other. You watch as someone, you know, just literally just swings the chain at someone's face and it lacerates it, and that person just grins as it happens, and then attacks back, puncturing the person's chest time and time again with a knife. And this go happens back and forth and back and forth. People stumble, you know, blood pattering to the ground, and they just still keep going until, you know, people that people begin to drop from blood loss and wounds. Um, I turn around, uh, Commissar, query, strange actions by Flesh. Please advise and beckon <laughs> you to come and look. I will, I will peer around the corner. And that's exactly what you're watching. You're just watching people fighting, but not actually defending themselves. They they can see the, the, the attack uh, you know, occurring, the person lunging for them, and they just take it head on. Oh man. Okay. Um <laughs> Um I think we should probably try to get one of them. Okay. So uh, how 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 should we I don't know. Um I can, I can probably They've only got, they've not got any metal, so I can't pull anyone across, really. Yeah, last man standing, wait for them all to, um... ID Fortran is literally just, like, does not compute as to why they seem to be enjoying this, so... <laughs> Danica pretty much has the same look on her face. Does Danica um, want to address them? Does she want to use her position as commissar? Do you want to walk out and command them to stop fighting? Oh. <sighs> You said there's a vehicle. Yeah. Can I move the vehicle? 
I think it's too heavy to use with your your magnetics. Your magnetics are pretty only good, only really any good for lifting, you know, certain heavy weapons. I mean, time mm, vehicles. Plus double rank meters away, yeah. I mean, should we get Sister Mariana over here to bless them? Potentially. I mean... That would involve them finding us. That's true. <laughs> You're the ones who were lost. I so know. we'll cut back to the others <laughs> in the open air market. You've tended to the man's wounds. No wound, the bloody stump committed by Rufio. Uh, what do you want to do now? Uh, all right, well, let's go back and find uh, the commissar, and then we'll uh, head to the enforcer station. And, of course, you head back out onto the streets, away from, from this open-air market, from the chamber that you were in, and hoping to find ID Fortran and Commissar Danica. Of course, they're nowhere to be found. What, uh, what skill is used for tracking people? Uh, ooh, that's a good point. Um, Sounds like it'd be investigation. Yeah, that'd be right. Or survival, potentially, if it's can relevant. I, if you Can I use survival? Yeah. I'm just going to immediately see if I can figure out where they went to. If that doesn't work, I do have investigation. Yeah, I'm going to give you, like, a... Let's see. Great. I'm going to make it quite... Yeah. Um, you're definitely going to... Yeah, that's not enough. Because okay. it's a very difficult environment for you to search around in. And one of those was an exalted oh. icon. Two of them are an exalted icon. I get nine dice for survival checks in the uh, underhive. Correct. So I will. Uh, I will do that because I'm a hive explorer. So I'm gonna look around and see if there's any. Well, that's weird. There's a broken pipe over there. Maybe there's like some it's soggy. Around. There's broken pipes everywhere. How can you tell? Well, it's fresh. See, it's damp, and then there's a soggy trail going that way. And I. Oh. Uh, I got uh, five icons, including a exalted icon on the wrath die. So the exalted icon gives you a point of glory. Yeah. So we get that to the communal pool, one point of glory. Mm. And yes, you are able to track the 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 soggy soggy footsteps, and you start heading towards ID Fortran and Danica. And as you do that. I'm going to roll to see what other interesting things happen. Uh oh. As you walk down the, the you, you, you go down the winding alleyways and streets past various piles of, of litter and, and empty cargo. You pass a few very large rats that hiss and shriek at you before bolting off into the darkness. Um, you then hear, as you pass a uh, uh, open door to one of the prefabricated uh you know housing blocks and inside it's completely pitch black but from it you hear a terrified scream it's shrill and it it rocks you to your very core uh, uh, just keep going everyone that didn't we already got like the commissar no, I, I, I I ignore him and, and I the screaming doesn't stop yeah, I'm going towards the screaming. I don't even acknowledge Rufio. I just go towards the screaming. Okay, where okay. you walk into this Anybody very dark Rufio? room, and as you get closer, as you go inside, you stumble a bit as you become accustomed to the darkness. And there before you, at your feet, is a person screaming, but seemingly asleep. You try to shake them, and they just keep screaming. <laughs> Meanwhile, Commissar, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh, I I think we're just gonna wait until one of them is left, because I like if, if I if I try to stop them. What's to say they aren't going to all come for me? <laughs> Interesting. So you literally will just stand there and watch you, them butcher wait, each other. Do you think that you couldn't take these people? <laughs> Is that your concern if they could? How many are you? there? Oh, at this point, you, they, you're at the point where there's about half them less left. So there's about 12 or 10 or 12 because you know, there are now 10 or 12 dead bodies on the ground. They're 
blood is pooling on the street before you. I, I would be comfortable if there were six. I, I feel comfortable taking on six. Your, your cogitators are working six is a good number. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but 12, 12, 12, 12, is, 12 is at the uh, runaway kind of stage. You're right. running the odds. So, so yeah. with those odds, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to wait until there's 10 of them. Then I will start talking. Okay. And hopefully by those odds, they'll drop a little bit before they start coming towards me. <laughs> and I, I'll, stand by, I'll stand behind you uh, with my rifle pointed. Yeah, that works. Okay. To, to shoot at them when, when it all goes wrong. As I have a feeling you might all be. right. So I am going to try to lead them out of their stupor or whatever this is. And, uh, uh, talk them out of it. Okay. So. Does my does my massive long galvanic rifle being pointed at them add anything to her dice roll? No, you're just getting the bonus. Like, you're just getting the bonus to aiming your listen, shot ready. I'm not intimidating them. I'm using leadership. <laughs> All right. Tomato, tomato. Ooh, I have. Two exalted icons and two regular icons. And it really doesn't matter what you say as you go out before them proclaiming that they should stop fighting in the name of the God Emperor or, or stating your position as Commissar. They pay no attention to you as you watch someone walk up behind, as one, one of the hivers walks up behind another and slits his throat. And you notice that they're all you, it becomes clear as you've walked closer. They're all seemingly their eyes are closed. They're asleep. Oh, okay. I tried. So, query, Commissar, asleep humans attacking. If we incapacitate, no longer attack. Yeah, let's incapacitate. Take off legs. No, hit on head. Hard. Already asleep. Won't work. Mm -hmm. Must stop movement. Entangle. Is here. In Do you have a net? I no, I have a sword. So uh. back to where you you exit the, the room with the person that was screaming as they're asleep? Do you leave them there? Oh, yeah, I don't take them. I'm just no. like... <laughs> oh, okay. It's weird, even for you. Yeah, I'm Night like... Night terrors. Yeah, I remember that from the uh, from the orphanage. It happened several nights. Yeah, just move you on. get over it after a while. You internalize You them. set off uh, you know, Rufio, you're you're still tracking, uh, waiting for where to, you know. No, I'm not waiting. I, I've been waiting until he went in there. <laughs> yeah, I kept true. moving. Um, I kept you moving. Keep mo you keep moving, and uh, you and Sister Mariana then uh, eventually find uh, ID Fortran waiting in the alleyway, looking out onto the street where Danica is stood, trying to address this, you know, this fight, this butchery that's occurring. <laughs> Uh, hey, robot. Um... <laughs> what is going on here? <laughs> Hi, Goat. Uh, your human things. Sleeping, killing, murder, death. Entertainment for robot. I'm just half confused, robot. You should stop them from killing each other. We're debating... Query, currently debating how to. Uh, have you considered hitting them over the head? Already <laughs> asleep. Would not work. Right. I can hit okay. you over the head to prove point. You already No, asleep. thank you. Uh, I am awake right now. As so you stood there, Sister so Mariana. Sister Mariana, you, oh, go Sister ahead, sorry. Mariana sees across the street, past the fighting sleepwalkers, you see something in the shadows in the other in the next alleyway over. 
dart, you know, there for a moment and then darts off into the darkness. Uh, Sister Mariana will point at him and yell, or it and yell, "Halt!" Does it? Does it in fact halt? No, of course not. It started off and fled from your direction. What, sister? What did you see? With me. What? Oh. Mariana will run after it and hope. Um, and assuming she has faith that everybody else will come with her, since yeah, you know, she told I'll, them to. Yeah, I put the body down that I was carrying, and I run after Sister Mariana. All right, I will go too because. Not much else we can do other than help to slaughter each other, which, eh, let's go. Query, fighting problem solved. Ignore problem, new problem arising. So you set <laughs> off down, uh, you all set off down into this alleyway, f- trying to find the shadowy entity that was hidden there. And again, you're into another warren of, of alleyways and small streets past and you're passing more people that have fallen asleep in the streets that are, you know, fitfully, you know, asleep, dreaming of something. Maybe they're having nightmares. Some are murmuring. And, yeah, we'll go with Sister Mariana. Um, Sister Mariana, you lose sense. You're leading, you're leading the, the, the team. You're leading the cadre. And as you turn another corner, you then see before you a mighty ancient citadel, a Gothic cathedral that radiates authority. You'll feel yourself dragged down into the darkness beneath this citadel. Then everything becomes a nightmare. Massed guards, squalid conditions, beatings and pain and fear. The air stinks of fear and blood. The sounds of weeping, screaming and praying echo through the blackness. In the dark, their own dreams, and the dreams are nightmares. And in a blind pain, you try to send out a warning, a cry for help, but no one answers, no one hears. You cry out louder and louder until something breaks, not you, but reality itself. You find that you stumble over because you've been seemingly dreaming as you've been running. And you stumble over, falling down, uh, tripping over some cabling or or a pipe and as you look up before you there is a bat there is maybe two or three rather large again sleepwalking hivers armed with what can only be described as rotary flensing blades used to carve up the world fish that they they uh, harvest and catch on this world but before you even have a chance to act you hear this Almost like a, uh, almost like when you run your finger around the edge of a wine glass, and it makes that humming sound, and you watch as their heads are cut clean off and roll from their shoulders. Hmm. The direction of the shots as they impact into the wall, and you realize the shots are not simply shots; they are wafer thin discs, blade like discs. And you look up in the direction they come from, and all you can see stood there, at some distance away, but you can make it out, is what only can be described as one of those foul Eldari creatures armed with what looks like a rifle. It looks in your direction and simply nods and then disappears into the darkness. Heresy. Xenos! Oh. Oh, we've dealt with these scum before. <laughs> Query. Clearly. Xenos, help. Why bad? Query. Why bad? Query. Why bad? You're not human. Must be Xenos. Query. We've been over this before. I'm an abhuman. We're a type of human. Cheese. Query. Not human head. Therefore, not human. I am not human. I am machine. I am better. You, you are a robot. Not human. Yep. <sighs> Donica, right. you, you all come around the corner and you can see that Mariana is just getting up off her knees. You can see these bodies that have had their heads clean cut off. You know, literal, just the cleanest cuts you've ever seen because you've never faced the Eldari in battle. This is a strange, this is the work of strange Xenos weaponry. You've heard of it. And they're shuriken rounds. And 
something's whispering in the back of your mind. Oh. Consider it a gift. Consider it a gift. Do not get lost. You are looking for station Alpha 6. Take the first left, then right, then left, and carry on. That is what you're looking for. If you see us again, just walk on. We are not your business. We have our own things to attend to. Well, it seems like, Commissar, we have a real problem here. Xenos have infiltrated the planet. We're going to need an entire uh, no. review of planetary security here. And we need to hunt down these filthy scum. These pointy-eared, soft-skinned... <laughs> Smooth armored Rufio stand down. Filth. Meanwhile, what's we're doing? Because <laughs> <laughs> everyone's going mad. You're yeah. just slinking in the shadows. Yeah, I'm just I'm just sl slinking along. Um I would have uh, hopefully found the uh the area where people were slaughtering each other. Yes. Um is everyone dead? Everyone is dead. Keep going. Yeah. Problem solved. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you literally what you you just have to follow Sister Mariana's bloody footprints. Yeah, I'm like, oh, footprints, and I follow those, and um, kind of just slink through until I catch up with them silently. Yeah, and as you're slinking through, you you know, you've maybe taken a more uh, uh, you've taken a, a slightly different route because you know which direction they're going. Yeah. But you're you're trying to stay to the shadows, and you do witness. And you hear that that uh, singing that uh, that comes with the the shots which decapitated those two hivers, mm. and you look in the direction and you do catch also a glimpse of the Eldari sniper. <laughs> of course, they slink off into the darkness because they they have chameleonic cloaks and other strange. Oh, things. like me. And you're even surprised. You're surprised that they can even they, their ability to disappear is is more than your own capabilities, because they're elves and therefore better inherently. Oh yeah, they're inherently better. <laughs> they even believe they're better. Oh. They're better than us. There is something almost there is something disconcerting about the emotionlessness of their smooth, you know, masks that they wear, their pointed helms. Sounds really familiar. Um, totally not. Totally not used to anyone wearing a mask around here. Nope. Nah. That's slipping all. off into shadows, featureless. But face. they are. You know, they do stand like Eldari aren't just like human-looking elves. They do stand a good seven foot tall. Their <laughs> eyes are completely black if they are not wearing a helmet. Uh, there is nothing. They only are human in the sense. Only seem human in the sense that they have a humanoid form. Otherwise, they are utterly alien i'm gonna observe that direction for a little bit um and when i'm sure that that sniper is not coming back yeah um, i'm just gonna slip down to where the group is and kind of slide up behind them quietly stand there okay what does anyone want to do i i look forward to where he directed me or it or yeah. they they directed me um and looked to the left yeah you you can see in that direction uh you can just make out there is some signage for the enforcer station this way oh hold on i need to i left a body back there i should probably grab i've got his arm but i just get the rest of the body you know if we leave the arm at the station he'll probably be along to pick it up I don't think it works like that. I mean, he has the other arm to pick it up with. It'll, it'll be okay. Uh, Two okay. minutes before I leave you behind. <laughs> I got it. Okay. Jeez, Commissar. Got Zeno scum around here. And, <laughs> and now you're talking to shots. the Commissar with, with such I, bad I, language. The clock has already been running for 10 seconds. I, no, I, mean, say, I said this as I was running. I come back with the body <laughs> in one minute, 50 seconds. See, this will be very interesting when we do a side story where everyone is just playing Eldari, because I'd love to see how alien everyone can be. 
Oh, that'd be fun. Oh, it's just it's just mo- it's just those monkai because that's how they refer to humans. It's monkai. That's their monkai, derogatory, which yeah, the wrong where term. that came from. Yeah, stupid, stupid fur-covered creatures. <laughs> anyway, um, so I guess Danica is leading the cadre in the direction of the enforced station. Yeah. And again, it's desolate. There is no one around. And as you turn the corner, following the directions that 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 voice told you to follow, you stop still. As before you, there is a pile of skulls, still covered, slick in blood, still connected to the spinal columns as if they've been torn out. And they're piled up before you in this alleyway, in this corridor, and no one is around. There's no signs, no violence, nothing that would suggest cult activity, no signage, nothing, no symbols to the dark gods, nothing. Just 12 skulls. We are. We are. <laughs> what have you been doing? <laughs> Weary, we are. Where are you? <laughs> I walk up behind you. Oh, crap. I just walk, I, I look at the skulls, I walk over and I pick one up. It uh, from you don't really need to roll. From what you can tell, they have not been cleanly removed from bodies. They have been hacked out, yeah. potentially with flensing blades and rotary saws. There are still viscera connecting. So, so it's not the same bones. clean cuts that we saw with the Eldari. No. No. Okay. Or that no. you would see from me. It's the guys the Eldari. Uh, this is more more what butchers would do. I just like drop the skull back into the pile like it's worthless no collector's value on that one okay no he only wants the face he doesn't want the skull ah okay i thought maybe he could get a deposit back on it or something i'm i'm not sure uh, well i mean maybe in the future <laughs> all right uh is there um let's... around the actual file oh, is there any blood trails kind of leading away from it or uh no no signs for how those skulls got there just a pile of skulls and a pool of blood from them what's what else is in the area uh you are in it's an a, open area with a pile of skulls you're, you're basically in one of the larger corridors that leads off into another you know under a building or under some of the prefab home uh, buildings before you get to the enforced station yeah, you know, it's typical for the area. It's it's dripping with condensation, rusting. There's the rumble of the waves outside of the hive and other, you know, equipment. Which, well, it should be noisier than it is, but it clearly because of being desert, you know, deserted or or because people are asleep. M- much of the factory equipment that should be running is not. Is the blood fresh? Was it dried? In- oh, it's fairly fresh. Yeah. Cool. Query, who leaves skulls around? As Weir, as Weir is observing (laughs) the, uh, (laughs) as Weir is observing that skull, you're for a moment not looking at the skull. You realize in your head, what's in your hand, the way you're holding the skull is almost as if you're holding a person's head up are still attached to their body, of course, by, by their chin, as if you're talking to them or they're talking to you. You look down at them. It's a man. They're na- nearly naked, shivering, cold, pale skin, emaciated. You realise that he's cross-legged, and around you, you're in a small cell. His expression on his face is one of sorrow. His hair is untidy, dirty, draggled. I didn't, I didn't mean it. I'm so terrified. I don't know what it's like. You don't know what it's like. Fear, pain. I, I, I can't control it. I was just calling for help. I feel every one of them. He points to his temple. I'm so sorry. You. And as you watch the cell that you're in with this man, where begins to slow from like the gratings to allow, you know, all the piss and shit to come out of the cell or, or for water to flow out, it 
begins to bubble up out of the great gratings around you, out of the gratings so that you know the guards can look in, in into the cell. Blood begins to bubble up around your boots, around your cloak. The emaciated man sits unmoving as the blood begins to rise up around you. And for a moment, you begin to panic where, because sure, you're, you're a killer. You have been indoctrinated into a cult to the God Emperor. You are, you are one who commits holy death upon the enemies of the Imperium. But even this makes you begin to panic, panic as if you're drowning. And so when you replace the skull, you actually just drop it back on, onto the pile and you're stood still and you are dripping with sweat. I just turn and look at the commissar. Like, where to next? All right. Uh, uh, commissar can make a observation roll. So make an awareness roll. Okay. Where is my sheet? What roll was it? Uh, awareness. Awareness. All right. Uh, two successes, one exalted. Cool. So that gives us another point of glory into the pool. So you're on two points of glory. Um, yeah, you can see dripping from the bottom of Weir's mask, you can see it's dripping sweat. Or tears. It's dripping something clear. It's definitely tinged red. Well, <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, I am, I am not going to acknowledge it i am going to we're going to keep going up to the right yeah you eventually arrive at the enforcer station and outside of so the enforcer station is a squat building um you know it's built built to be designed as a detention center as a training ground uh and also as in effect a bunker uh, for the enforcers in this district. And outside, it is almost like a battlefield. There are bodies scattered around, dismembered, and, you know, brutally murdered. Most of them appear to be citizens, though some are members of the enforcers. There are bloody gun holes in some people, or they've been hacked to pieces by sharp objects, or it looks like some have been beaten and torn apart. There are also, there's a, a group of people that are seemingly being burnt to death, more than likely by an enforcer flamer unit. The building itself, though, has suffered minor damage. And, you know, there's the main doors, which will then lead you into the prison cells that they have there locally, and also, you know, the... Um, all the uh, the rooms which are put left over for the enforcers to detain people, question people, and also to sleep and to rest and to eat. You know, so just think about it. it's like a it's a, it's a, essentially a police station, but like a but a fortified bunker with very large doors with hazard symbols over them. Uh, you know, painted in yellow and black. You know, chevrons. All right. And yes, there's no one else alive outside. Fantastic. <laughs> um, Would you like me to go in first? Sure. You head up to the door then, Sister Mariana. Yep. And you press the, the door activation stud and with a gr with a grinding groan, it slides open, and before you is the main, what can only be described as main vestibule for the building. And inside, chairs are turned over where seemingly people would potentially sit to await to be brought in to be spoken to by uh, by um, by the enforcers. And instead, in, within the building, again, you find that on the ground there are a number of citizens lying 
seemingly asleep. Are there any enforcers? Yes. Uh, beyond um, some, Perfect. you know, beyond some heavy duty uh, bulletproof glass, there is the enforcer station clerk, I guess, you know, he sat there at his desk, also asleep. <sighs> or in, in just so we're clear, these are people who are sleeping, sleeping, not combat sleeping right now. They're all asleep on the ground. Okay. Must be something in the air. <sighs> Mariana will uh, go back to the door, open it, and uh, wave everybody inside. It's more of the same in here, I'm afraid. Uh, criminal and enforcer alike, all asleep. We can we can mm. continue searching the building, but everybody everybody in here appears to be unconscious. I I have a feeling what we are looking for is in here. Is it? So there's no one awake in here. There's no or, like uh, not in this unit or anything. Some... You Something. you have to start investigating the building. I guess there are going to be okay. prison cells. There's going to be a canteen. There's going to be, you know, what you expect for a military, uh, a you know, a pseudo kind of police military uh, building. There'll be a, a morgue and a medical bay. I'm sure the morgue will be fun. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I guess. I guess I gotta take this guy's uh, this this individual down to the uh, morgue slash medical area. The one on the side. That's how I'm yeah. going. So, you're probably are. Medical, so you've got that guy, you've got the, the, the shopkeeper that you butchered. Yeah. His yeah. name is Lefty. Yeah. And you're <laughs> yeah. heading down to the to the the medical bay to help patch him up a bit more. Because obviously mm -hmm. what you've done so far is not the best thing. You're mostly going to use a um cauterizing uh, what they call a cauterization wand, which you simply well, uh, wait, like, there's there's no one there's no one down here. I had to well, do my own. I'm <laughs> Well, as you okay, so as you walk through, uh, is anyone going to the prison cells to see? To I'm going to investigate that? around. Yeah. Yeah. So as you as you head around, whether you're going to the cells, the canteen, you're going to the main um, the mess quarters or the or the uh, the bunks for the enforcers, people are just asleep. Those few people that you find around are asleep. In the Medicaid again. The enforcer, um, the enforcer uh, medical officer there is also asleep, sat on a table, head slumped down, and you can't wake them up. And within the cells, uh, you, who's going to the cells? Mariana. This is Mariana and we're, okay, in the cells, again, there are numerous petty criminals lying asleep in, this, in the cells. The cells are squalid, rank. It's an awful place to be. The lighting is flickering um, from what lumens still operate. But there is one person that is awake. The cells, these cells, um, you know, you can peering through what grates there are uh, in the um, in the doors. And there is a, a lone person uh, who who looks up. Hello? I can hear you out there. Ah, uh, yes. Don't go. Don't I go. Know. I haven't eaten. Is there any food out there? I haven't eaten in days. I'm starving. Is there any days. water? Days? You haven't eaten in days? How long have they been asleep? Yeah, Sister Mariana will, will follow the voice to the whatever they've been, cell he's They've in. been asleep for, for, yeah, days on end. I've been here for, for at least three four cycles now well then let's get you something to eat sister mariana will depress the activation stud to open the the gate and let him out of his cell okay so damo uh, as he he introduced himself as damo um he explains that he's there uh he was you know, brought in because he's a, a thief in a pit pocket and he simply pissed off the wrong person in the in the dome. Someone of some stature who was able to actually get the enforcers to bring him in. Uh, and yeah, he looks pretty bad. Like, you know, he's been beaten by the enforcers. He's still bruised. Uh, though 
he is also looks really like his eyes darting around as if he's watching for something to kind of jump out from from somewhere. Well, Darmu, I'm Sister Mariana. This is my colleague, Weir. If you come with us, we can find you something to eat and drink. Surely there's a ah, canteen you. around here. Thank you, Sister. It's been, like I say, it's been days since I've I've eaten. Um, I've seen, I've, I've heard screams. Is any, is everyone dead? No, no, not, not everyone. No, uh, a fair number, of course, are, are in fact quite, quite dead. Um, in fact, ev everybody seems to be asleep, like you, like you noticed. Uh, but several of them are still walking around and uh, attacking each other. It's very strange. Strange? What in the God Emperor's name is going on? Emperor's teeth, this is the last thing I want to be involved in. Is everyone, you're saying everyone's killing each other? Well, again, no, 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 of course not. That would be, that would be insane. Not everyone, just a, a small percentage of the people here are attacking one another and uh, slaughtering each other. Sister Mariana needs to make a persuasion test. Sister Mariana is not good at that. <laughs> <laughs> you can get a plus two bonus die to this because you've already taken him out of his cell so you're clearly not a heartless you know heartless person you've already proven that you're the highest I rolled was a three and I got a one on the uh, whatchamacallit special die oh awesome so okay that's probably I'm going to go out on a limb here and guess not wow. good. I'm going to have fun <laughs> with this. Right. Uh. Okay. You set off heading towards the canteen and Damo begins to explain what he understands. So it started like a few days ago. I, I saw one of the guards. He just fell asleep. I was looking. I, I was peering and he was walking along and he just stopped walking and just, you know, just fell to the floor and fell asleep. I mean, we just went past him. It must be the same person. Anyway, they just lie down and go to sleep. And mm -hmm. and it's just so strange. Well, and everyone else in the in the cells went quiet. And nothing would they wouldn't wake up. And then I'd start hearing them scream like they were having nightmares. And at one point I couldn't sleep for, for a whole night because everyone was screaming nonstop. It was like the world had just ended. Uh, they kept, those that spoke, uh, uh, they spoke of dreams. They were speaking in their, their, their sleep. They said things like a black prison, a spire. And then I heard the riots outside and the fighting and, and there was more screaming and explosions and, and the Wait, sounds of people being. Did you say a spire? Yes, a dark oh. spire. I haven't I saw something similar. Weir, have you, he, seen, he, have you seen Aspire? Huh, interesting. Go on, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. Please, please continue. And, and, but some of this happened before I was even brought in. This was happening days before I'd seen people fall asleep. I'd, I'd seen people people at, a, at, a, at an obscure den turn on each other and, and they just maimed each other. It was grotesque. And, and then eventually... Um, in some respects, I I was brought in because I I thought the safest place for me was to be brought in by the enforcers. So I purposely pickpocketed someone's pocket who I shouldn't have to ensure that I was brought in for safety. You do what you do, and it, you do obscura. Is that I is don't that... do obscura. No, I no. of course not. That's just just uh, just somewhere I go to uh, to. To, for my business. I don't partake of it myself. You begin to round the corner, heading towards the canteen. And as he, as he heads around the corner, going ahead of you, because obviously he, he, he's clearly hungry and he knows the direction, or at least he's aware of the direction. He can read signs. He knows that it says canteen in low Gothic. As he walks around the corner, there, you're, as you step before you step forward, there is just suddenly kind of like a, almost an explosion of blood 
from his direction. There's a scream, and you watch as a, as this beast bounds before you, dragging him by the throat. He is screaming this guttural cry for help, and you watch as it drags him away, and it phases through the wall. Weird. Did, did you see that too? Okay. Uh, uh, Sister Mariana vision. and Weir are going to have to make rolls to not go crazy at this point um, because you've just witnessed something which doesn't really obey the rules of reality uh, oh. in any sense of, the, of what you understand. So uh, this will be, let me find the right rules for this. Uh, it must be a test for, uh, let me see, other tests. Uh, attribute test? No, I think it's got to be a test for corruption. There we go. Oh, hey, great news. Uh, because of my purity of faith ability, me and my allies within 15 meters, which I believe Weir has to be, gain uh, plus double rank bonus dice to corruption tests. Uh, yeah, I will... Um, it's not a corruption <laughs> test, in fact, though. It's going to be a resolve test. That's what I was looking for. Um, you're going to have to roll your resolve. Uh, you need to get at least two successes because of the fear of what you've just witnessed. You've watched something, something that doesn't obey the rules of reality. This strange hell beast, this hellhound, tear someone apart and phase through a wall, dragging them away, screaming. Does that um, include the wrath test? Yes. Uh, I got one icon and one exalted icon. So you succeeded. I have one icon and two exalted icons, one of which is on the wrath die. Excellent. So it's another point in the glory. Sweet. You stand there. Again, you've witnessed many horrific things already in your journey to this station. And now you are left, not terrified, but you are certainly more and more worried about what is even going on. You've witnessed some creature that doesn't obey the rules of reality. What you did see of the creature, and I will describe what you what you what little you saw of the creature to understand what it looks like. Let me just scroll down to the full description of it. It's a wonderful thing. I do uh draw it's, one of my power blades. It's, its face is covered in numerous uh in, in numerous eyes. Um it has a jaw like filled with teeth. Its skin is was like rippling with muscle, and it's kind of a, a weird purplish hue. And um, it even has out from the back of its body uh, further kind of appendages, like claws, uh, which locked onto Damo as it carried him away. In fact, the only way to describe its face is it's even its face is just is just bare bone. <laughs> and the more you think about it, Weir, the more you realize that you don't think it even had skin. Nice. So it was just black bone? Hmm. Yeah. Huh. Well, right. It's not normal. At which point we will have a pause, have a break, because I'm sure people want to uh, yeah. get a refreshment of some form. And we will mostly be back then in about 10, 15 minutes. Yep. I think it's fair. Sounds like a plan. And we'll carry on with the enforced station and find out what Rufio is doing and what ID4 trans up to. And of course, Danica. Excellent. Good deal. Thanks, everyone. Excellent. So we'll be back in a moment. <laughs>
And we're back. Right. Uh, we've just seen Damo shredded and dragged off into nothing. God knows where. And the rest of you are investigating. And Danica, you are uh, you are in the Enforcer uh, mess hall. Yep. And as you look around, of course, and the same for ID Fortran, same for Rufio. Again, you notice there are no enforcers here on duty. It seems like any enforcers who are about would have headed off outside to deal with the rioting that was going on, and likely from you, you, you assume more than likely have also fallen asleep. You know, victims of the same strange curse that is afflicting the uh, the denizens of uh, the waterline. Though you do find uh, a the desk space which uh the enforcers would use for doing whatever paperwork because we know the imperium loves paperwork it loves to know how many how many bolt gun rounds have been used to put down this right how many bolt gun rounds have been used for this right how many people have you have you um you know pacified with your shock mall this day uh if you're not hitting targets they're kind of disappointed if you're not pacifying enough people uh 
you know, it is a, uh, a nightmare of bureaucracy uh, that is the Imperium. And you do eventually find a desk which is, uh, which has a name plate on it, which says Officer, uh, Officer Sidero. And on the desk, there is a small screen and also there is uh, a place where you can slot in data slates. And before you on this desk is a data slate and also a hollow quill, which you use to you know, write entries into a data slate. You can activate this data slate and you can see what information is there, though it depends likely it is also encrypted because of course it is you know enforcer uh, information hey i hi. will yeah. sit down and uh, pick up the slate put it in and uh, have a way yeah. with it you you uh from you know from one of your fingers i'm sure id fortran the tip of your finger a small socket attached to a tendril emerges and you plug yourself in and you start to decrypt the data slate. Uh, you just need to make a tech test. Cool. I've updated this by now. Tech six. Ooh. Uh, how do we do rerolls again in this? Uh, that, that's spending a wrath point. Glory add dice to dice pulls. Uh, yeah. Glory does some other things which I can't remember. It says on your character sheets. Yeah, rerolled all fail. Failed wrath. Failed dice. I'm going to spend one of my wrath to reroll that. Okay. Because even though I've now got six, I still only got one icon. Right, so you can reroll all the ones that failed. Cool. I now have one, two, three, four, five, five icons and one exalted icon. Okay, so you've got more than enough. You can shift the exalted icon to the glory pool if you want. Yeah. So there are four points of the glory pool if people need them for anything. So you begin to decrypt the data slate. And once you're done breaking the encryption, it doesn't take you too long. Uh, text begins to appear on, uh, on the screen before you. And it... And I'm of course Myself as well. Yeah, you can download it to your, your cogitator banks. And you find the relevant, more recent entries. Uh, you know, you simply have to sort through various um, uh, various keywords. And you begin to read it. And of course, you're illuminated by the green, the, the, the monochromatic green screen as these entries uh, appear before you. And you read. There must be a, a cause for the sleeping sickness sweeping over the district. The Medicaid says this disease, or whatever it is, is not biological in origin, which leaves few other options, all of which are terrifying. Violence, screaming nightmares, the whole district is affected. Even my fellow enforcers are not immune to the infection of the mind. I must not fall asleep until I find its origin. May the Emperor guide me. Another entry reads, it seems to be centered on the Iron Watch prison complex, which the locals call the Black Lighthouse. So many psychers, we've had to house them somewhere. But something got loose in the Iron Watch. I must investigate further. You scroll through some more entries. Records indicate a rogue psyker named Scortinus Andras was brought into the Black Lighthouse the day before the first sleepers were reported. It seems too solid a link to just be coincidence. I'm tired. Must be. I mustn't fall asleep. I need to get to the lighthouse. I mean, Iron Watch. Before the riots grow any worse. I will report my findings when I return. That was the last entry. It's dated today's date. It was only a few hours ago. And that was saying that he had travelled off. Yeah. Cool. Um, as, uh, I, I read it all. I read it all out as I read as, as I go through, so everyone's aware. Is there a? Um, a and then I just kind of get up and start heading off towards somewhere to try and see if I can find the Iron Watch. I don't really give a crap whether anyone follows me. I say, is there a is there a map or anything like that of the of this uh, district? Um, you can download onto your own personal data slate from Sidero's desk um, schematics. Okay. That you need I of will... the district. I will do that and then send it to everybody. Send it? Oh, uh, well, I, 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 
have no idea how this stuff works. Yeah, um, you will have to physically link it to people because um, you trying to send it to them will be like using dial-up uh, or worse. <laughs> um, I'm okay yeah. with sacrificing robots for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, meanwhile, Mike, Mike Brufio is in the Medicaid, in the Medicaid Bay. Uh, you put the sleepwalker, the, the person on a, on a, on a gurney to be treat to at least that he's lying down so you can treat him. Yeah, yeah. Is, is, any, is anyone here? I need someone to reattach an arm. Anybody? It's pretty spooky Anybody? down there. It's a bit weird. You know, there are, oh, tables, there are rows of various medical knives, you know, oh, bone saws okay. and things drills. Uh, yeah i don't of course the lockers are filled with bodies <clears throat> yeah i'm not gonna touch those uh geez this guy's this guy's gonna be in rough shape um okay i don't know how to reattach an arm myself so i guess i'll look for the local or closest cauterizing tool and just kind of seal the stump and he... uh do that using the cauterizing wand, you, which is basically uh, just a glorified knife that heats up and sizzles the skin to stop the bleeding. Um, the lights go off in the medical bay. The only illumination coming from the dull red glow of the cauterization wand. Then the data the data slate screen where the uh, the medical officer is sat asleep at flickers on okay well um guess guess I'm going to take a look at that and not laugh at what i just saw in the chat just going to go take a look at the data slate you <laughs> walk over and as you look at the screen it's just pure static. And then for a moment it stops and all you can see is a emaciated, blank looking face of an old man. And he's just talking at you, talking from the screen. You can't hear what he's saying. And then you suddenly feel his hands reach out from the screen and grab you by your horns, pulling your face towards the oh, screen. My horns. Ah, ah, and then the lights ah, come on and you realize that you are that you as the lights come on you realize that you are actually have pushed the medical officer off his chair that you were sat on the chair and you were asleep at the desk and the screen is blank okay no no one else is here. No one else uh, is here. Okay. Can make um, a resolve test. I uh, I will make a resolve test. Um, I'm terrible at resolve, and I got two icons. You're okay. Yeah. You are sweating, but you are unshaken, but you're not going to run in terror from what's happened Whoa. in this dark uh, right. morgue. So. That was really weird, but back to my original plan. Uh, I guess I'm going to try to wake up this uh, the shopkeep with some like some Imperium smelling, smelling salts, salts or something like yeah. that. Yeah. It doesn't work. He is still oh, gosh. asleep. Well, he wasn't asleep to begin with. But oh, he, he just, was asleep he, as you dragged him away, though. He did fall asleep. Oh, from, I thought he just passed out from blood. He okay, well. Out. He's not waking up from that, though. No. Yep. Well, guess I'll go find the rest of the crew. And what sta what happens in the morgue stays in the morgue. <laughs> right. Uh, let me see. Um, why is that? Uh, what am I looking for? Sorry. So you head back up to the main level, and of course, Weir and uh, and Sister Mariana will have headed away from the cells. I'm sure you're looking for everyone else. Yeah, we'll, I'll be searching down the rest of the group to let them know what happened. I'm going to continue what about to the cantina and see if there's yeah. anyone there. No, there's nothing there. Things are, chairs are knocked over. There's the remains of, you know, there are trays with food that's stale or, bidding, you know, has gone off. It's been left out for days. 
Do I have any clue what this thing was that pulled away our informant? <laughs> Not a clue. You've never witnessed anything like it in your life. All right. You're, the only thing you can imagine from things you have seen on the front line on some of the worlds, you're left with a clear impression that it is a creature of the warp. That is anything that comes to mind. Mm. Well, that's not good. If there's no one in the canteen, I'm going to head back uh, to try to catch up with Sister Mariana and the rest of the group. Yep. You are all on the... Yeah, you head to the main, the main level, uh, again, to the main uh, hall, and... You know, you've got your data site, Commissar, with the information you need, and you're yep. simply awaiting the others so you can set off towards uh, the the prison, uh, the Iron Watch prison. And, you know, Weir and Sister Mariana look, you know, again, I don't know how worried they look. I'm not sure whether Rufio is showing any signs of having witnessed anything that's been a bit frightening. Uh, my uh, my hood is down much lower than usual. Is your you, you've got a bolt pistol, right? Uh, last pistol. You've got a last pistol, so yeah, you, yeah, you've mostly got that ready, just making sure as you go, th you know, walk out of a door yeah. that there's yeah. nothing that's going to jump out on you. Yeah, actually, in other words, I'm you, sure everyone's a little bit jittery. You will notice Weir is, actually has one of his power blades out and is carrying Excellent. it in his hand. Um, probably like along the back of his arm just so it's not like swinging around but yeah all right did anyone see anything interesting i turn and um, look at sister mariana no no, no i uh, no uh i just cauterized that guy's wounds couldn't find anyone down the, the medical area everyone was asleep um it's pretty weird i don't want to alarm everybody but uh, well, Mr. Weir and myself were searching the uh, the cells. We did find one individual who was uh, still conscious. Um, he said he hadn't eaten in several days, and the screaming was keeping him awake. Anyway, uh, his name was Darmo. He was a thief, uh, and definitely also a drug user. And he was uh, carried away by a black dog with no skin uh, through a wall. They just disappeared into nothing. So if I had to guess, and I do, I would say that there's a creature of the warp present, and we should possibly be on heightened alert. All right. Thank you, sister. Of course. Fantastic. Why would I... a creature of the warp be here? That's peculiar. I repeat the diary entry, which talks about rogue psychers. Mm. There is a psyker prison on this planet. I mean, that makes sense, actually. You need to keep them somewhere, especially when they to, to hold them before they get shipped off to be sacrificed to the uh, Astronomicon on uh, the uh, God Emperor's throne. I when mean, do you think the last, um, on that note, uh, Commissar Danica, when do you think the last time a black ship of the Inquisition would have likely have come to this planet to pick up any psychers, any rogue psychers, to take them off? To the Imperium, knowing that the great rift lies between your this world and holy terror. Yeah, it would probably have been a while. <laughs> so these things have been locked up in a very confined space. And every rogue psychic is getting locked up in there. And what else do we know that the great rift has occur has caused? How many more psychers are are emerging? amongst the imperial population since this like great three, three rift in the war oh yeah three or four thousand or uh, thousands city. upon thousands um you know you've got thousands upon thousands of psychers rogue psychers latent abilities erupting that all are a potential gateway for demonic entities to indeed. come into our real space indeed and all and of these clearly Clearly, if I may say your storyteller, clearly some of the Xenos scum must be affecting this. I've heard rumors of uh, uh, these these Eldari having effects with Psychers, having their own Psychers themselves. Clearly, 
they're part of the problem here. Indeed, and these these the point is that prison will have housed rogue psychers. So psychers before they could be assessed by the Inquisition to either, you know, uh, assess them for potential for use in the Astra Militarum to become telepaths or to be turned into, uh, or to be bound, soul bound to the God Emperor and essentially have their souls sacrificed to fuel the Astronomicon. So these are all psychers that have been kept in this tower for far too long. And how many are in those cells is the big question. Um, fantastic. Shall we go? Well, speaking of, I mean, hold on, hold on. Commissar, if I, if I might recommend, um, there's only five of us. There could be thousands of psychers. Maybe we should at least communicate with uh, the, the uh, plant, acting planetary governor uh, and uh, some of the uh, maybe even planetary defense force here um because this this may be a a powder keg if you will to use a anachronistic term that's ready to blow so yes and we should blow it i agree here's here's the thing hmm. this powder keg is already leaking out all over the place in this entire it is. Sector. It is, yeah. We should act fast. We also, Commissar, should notify the pl acting planetary governor and the planetary defense force about the incursion of these Xeno scum, these Eldari. It, well, while they're arguing, is um, <laughs> is there anywhere in this building we haven't checked out yet? You, you've checked everywhere now. Okay. At this point. I just wanted to make sure. Continue. Um, just as a quick kind of aside here. Um, for story kind of thing with psychers. Would Sister Mariana know the Sisters of Silence? Uh, likely not really. Okay. She may well have heard of some of them uh, as part of the Indomitus Crusade, which has been led by the Primarch yeah. Revit Ulium, who is leading his crusade into the uh, into the uh, into the other half of the Imperium that's cut off by the, by the Great Rift, but they're nowhere near you. And not coming time anytime soon. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. ID Fortran, you need to rehack into the system to see if you can get how many psychers are actually in that prison. Yeah, cool. um. And if you can find schematics for it or anything like that. Yeah, uh, I'll do a deep, deep dive. You can do that once you go back to another control se uh, control center to do so, because you can't just remotely access their computers. No, I know that. I know. I'll... Yes, and I'll... as you're in that main that. hall, the large security doors that lead out to the main uh, vestibule slide open, and walking forward, stumbling and shambling, are a good half dozen in forces. Their armor covered in blood from fighting people. Some have got bullet holes in their armor, and they're carrying with them crackling shot mauls. One of them points in your direction. Put your hands where we can see them. You are oh, under com arrest. Commissar, you're up. Get us out of this. Alright. I will say um, uh, local enforcers, I am uh, Commissar Danica, uh, and I am investigating your uh, district for uh, signs and uh, evidence of cult activity and heresy within the Empire. And they don't pay attention to any of that. You can you actually realize that one of them, one or two of them, aren't wearing helmets, and of course, their eyes are closed. They're clearly asleep. I will draw my other power blade. <laughs> so I'll you just hear the. Yep. Yeah. There yeah, is. I take aim. Mm. And they start heading to you. They walk close towards you, you know, lifting up their shock mauls, ready to crack you around the head. 
Oh, I pull out my pistol. You. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, so who wants to go first? Because remember, that's how the initiative system works. Who wants to go like, first? Shall I shoot one in the head as they're coming towards us? Uh, you've got a good ranged weapon. You could always get a shot off first before one of them you know, charges in at you. Just to thin the, thin the herd out for the, the combat people. You good with that? Yep, that's fine. Cool. I will just randomly shoot one of them. I'm going to spend my other wrath point. I, I, me and dice don't, don't, don't mix. <laughs> Jesus. I've got three icons and I've got a one on the wrath dice. You've got three icons and one on the wrath dice. Okay, so you hit one of the enforcers square in the chest. And as you do so, the power cell in your um, in your rifle begins to sizzle and sputter. And clearly your weapon is not jammed, but is overloaded. And you're going to have to Ooh. spend a good turn trying to reload it. I have a reliable. You've got some reloads, but obviously... No, I'm going to have a look at some of the stats that I've got. Because I've got it's them. going to take a bit of time. On the weapon. Um, Right. So you fired your shot. Do you want to roll for the damage against him? Uh, straight 10 damage. I've got no exalted icon, so straight 10. Is it just, is there no extra damage? One, extra, one damage? extra dice. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so 11. 11. Uh, ending one, so remove one point of armor. Uh, okay, you glance him in the shoulder, and uh, it, the bolt of Plasma? I think that's what the carbine fires off. Uh, I will... It's something like that. Um, yeah, anyway, this... It's, kind of, it's yeah. almost a plasma gun. It's almost a plasma gun. Yeah, this plasma bolt you know, cuts through his armour and he drops to his knees, you know, trying to hold himself up and collapses on the ground. Uh, there go... One of them you know, stumbles forward in, in effect, effectively trying to charge one of you. Uh, and is going to run and attack. Who's going to be closest? I think we're going to go after... I ignore... I I reliable ignores the first complication. So I'm ignoring okay. one. Okay, fine. Uh, Sister Mariana, what's your defence? Uh, Sister Mariana's defence is three, but uh, she has a uh, chain sword which has the parry quality, so that raises it to a four for melee. Okay, cool. Uh, well, that's a complication for them. Um, they run forward with their shot ball, and yeah, you don't just simply parry. You, in one swift move, slice their arm off, the shot ball crackling as it hits the wall, and they drop to the floor, you know, blood pouring from their, the stump of their arm, and they... Rufio, we're going to need your assistance again. Don't need to attack. Uh, who wants to act next? <laughs> Hello. Because we're want to go into full combat mode. Yes. Your full <laughs> mode. Go on then, Batman. I have... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not being stealthy this time. I have both no. power blades out. I'm just going to try to take two of their heads off. Yep, go on. Um, so I'm only attacking two targets, so I don't take the DN because I have dual wield. Um, so it's just a wow. pull. Yeah, Ooh. defense three on both of them. Uh, okay, um, that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, um, with two exalted icons. So I will move one of my exalted icons into um, actually Damage. blood must flow, um, and I'm uh, going to cause cool. bleeding effects. Yeah. And then um, the two swords, swords, swords. Um, I get four extra damage dice plus five, so. Me... Uh, what's the AP on your swords? AP is the yeah, armor negative. penetration. Negative two, so it's two. Negative two. Okay, so their armor counts as their resilience counts as eight. So how much damage are you doing? Oh well, no, I thought uh, my sword. I, 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 it's two. The AP is two. Sorry, I re yeah, reduced it by two. two. Um, and what's the damage on the sword? Uh, five with that four ED, which is a one, a five, a three, and a six. So not quite enough to get through the armor. It slices in. I don't know, you said five, so yeah. Uh, not quite enough. It slices in. Um, you you merely 
cause a very minor flesh wound to them and they keep fighting. But of course, you've got the other blade as you're spinning around and likely could decapitate someone else. Yes, let me roll again. Really, is that what galvanic rifles fire? <laughs> they fire electromagnetic servitor rounds. They're self-guiding bullets, basically. The servo-guided bullets, yeah. Just having a look at I was thinking it was the plasma ones, but they're not, no. No, wow, that's fun. I'm actually going to spend a wrath. Go on, then. There we go. Uh, five icons. That's definitely a hit. With um, two, you, you can spare two successes. So if you've got an exalted icon, you can shift. Nope. Yep. That's better. Uh, so five. Um, the sixes on the damage count as double still, right? Yes. Okay, so one, two, five, six, nine. Nine. Yeah, you, you slice through um, and you... Rather than, I would say, rather than cutting the person's head off, you you simply just kind of do a, a, a thrust, lunging, and it and the the power blade just easily cuts through their armor as if it was cheese, and you draw it out, and they drop to the floor dead. Um, they one of them will attack you, where because obviously you didn't kill them, and you're right close next to them. So what's your defense? Um, my defense against melee is five is five uh okay so they've definitely hit uh with all their attacks um and it is a shock maul so let me just see what's interesting about this damage is four plus two ed ap1 agonizing which means every wound inflicted by an agony agonizing wound inflicts one shock so shock is um going to because it's a shock maul it's going to reduce your um, it's going to tie you out essentially. It's yep. doing flesh wounds in that sense. So it's going to wear you out. Uh, right. So let me just roll this extra damage dice. Uh, so in total, it does four damage, and your armor is two. So your armor counts as one against this. Uh, so I don't think it gets through your armor, does it? What's your armor? Five. Uh, no, what's, your what's your resilience? My sorry. resilience is five. Yeah, so it doesn't get through your armor. You you feel you feel that kind of annoying, kind of mild you know, mild shock like you like we would do if you put your fingers into like some electrical equipment while it's still on. Mm -hmm. And it it almost makes you loosen your grip on your power swords. If anything, that pisses you off more. Uh right, who wants to act next? Um Danica, I guess, potentially. You're right at the head of them. What do you want to use? Bolt pistol or chainsword? Bolt pistol. Bolt pistol. There we go. Um, you could use full auto and take down a whole load and just hold the trigger down. That would be brutal. <laughs> um, can I do that? Uh, yes, you can do a salvo attack. So what this means is that uh, you use up one of the reloads on your gun and it, you get the bonus to your ranged attack equal to the salvo rating of that weapon. Okay, so the salvo rating is one on there. So, so you use a reload to get an extra die on your on your shot. Um, no, we won't do that. Okay, we'll just do regular. So I use uh, is it weapon skill or ballistic? It'll be ballistic skill. Okay. Ah. Um, I got. Two regular icons, one exalted icon, and a one on my wrath die. Oh dear. Okay. So yeah, you've definitely you you empty the you've um your gun's jammed, uh, but you do get a shot off, and it does hit the enforcer. So you're gonna have to spend a turn, obviously, spending an action, uh, getting the jammed round out of the uh, bolt gun, or ignoring it for the time being, and said use your chainsword because hey, why not? Um, uh, but you get to roll to, dam to damage the guy. So the damage on a bolt pistol is? Uh, 10. 10. And the AP on a bolt pistol is? I think is about zero. Um, it's uh, 10, but there's one extra damage die. Yeah, so you get to roll pistol. one extra damage die then, Crystal. All right. We're going to add four to that. Uh, so, so the result of the so it's the same successes when you roll stuff. So it's, you rolled a is it a, you rolled a four on the die? 
Yes. Yeah, so it counts as one extra point of damage. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, yes, uh, you fire the shot off and the mass activated round slams into his chest and explodes the guy, shearing him in half because uh, that's what bolt guns do. Um, uh, that oh, a bolt mean... pistol has damage 10. That's insane. Yeah. Um, there's only really only one or two others left to do anything. One of them's going to attack. Uh, it's going to go for Rufio. Sure. You're there. Uh, what's your defense, Rufio? It's going to be three in melee combat due to my chainsword parry. Uh, it hits you. Uh, and uh, what's your armor? Do you have any armor? What's your resilience? Sorry. Yes. Re resilience is nine. Resilience is nine, so that counters eight. Uh, so I need to roll fairly well for this. Uh, no. Again, you get the same thing as where you get that mild electrical shock feeling as the crackling shock mall hits you uh, in, in the side of your chest. Again, your animalistic rage boils up inside you. I'm sure you bray a little bit before you, uh, I'm sure, thumb the yes. stud on your chainsaw. Yeah. I do, and I'm going to sweep the leg, Johnny. <laughs> Uh, I only got three icons. That's a hit. Okay. Um, I cannot shift any icons. Nope. Uh, my damage is five plus four extra damage dice, and they are brutal, uh, which is going to give me... Uh, with brutal, that means that a five or a six is two extra damage. Is that correct? Yeah, and a three and a four is a success. Yeah, so that means that I did nine damage. Wow, okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, what's the AP on a chainsaw? There is no AP. Um, oh, it's wow. It's, mine. You swing it down, and the blade starts cutting into uh, the, the, the armor of the enforcer, but it doesn't quite get through and get into the meat of him. And Oof, he backs geez. away from you, swinging his shock maul. Uh, right, okay. Uh, there's only one other of them that's going to attack and is going to go for. Uh, it's going to go for. Um, so hold on. How many have we killed here so far? Let me just get my numbers done. There's definitely one from Danica, one from Weir, one from ID Fortran, and I've done one, two attacks. So I'll do one more, uh, which will go. Uh, for... Sister Mariana did take one out when it attacked. Oh, yes, Sister her. Mariana. <laughs> oh, so we've done all of those. So um, it's all the way around. Who wants to take the first action? Uh, Mariana will go. If no one else has any objections, please. Okay. Oh, please go. Go, go for it. After you, uh, Sister Mariana. <laughs> yeah, she will uh, chain sword whichever one just attacked Rufio. Yeah. We're going to get that double chain sword going. Do, do, do. All right. So I got one, two icons and two exalted icons. So you've hit, and that means you can shift an exalted icon into damage if you want. I think I will. I think I will. Because uh, I need more dice on my chainsword attack. So the chainsword is brutal. So you said threes and fours count as a success as well. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. So that's one, two, three icons and one uh, exalted icon. So how much damage in total is that? Uh, uh, I'm going to go with 10. Yep. 10. Uh, yeah, you sweep that and you rend the person. It doesn't quite cut all the way through, but it digs deep into their shoulder and they drop down incapacitated. <sighs> and that leaves one left, which is the one that's still in combat with Weir, who's going to try and crack him around the head because why not? It's Weir. I'm going to let them have make use of one of the room points that's been lurking around this session mm. uh, so that they can um, definitely make sure they get a reroll on this to hit because uh, they're going to need it. Because um, <laughs> they're going to need it. Uh, they've definitely hit you. Okay. And then damage. Let's see if they can actually do some damage on this. Uh, they do six points of damage with AP1. So what's your resilience? Uh, my resilience is a five. Your resilience is a five. Okay, so that counts as four. So two points of damage. Uh, so you take two, two wounds and also lose two shock. 
Okay. Hmm. Nothing major. Um, so yeah, you know, it hits you. You feel slightly frazzled. There's a smell of almost flesh being burnt, or at least microwaved. And I'm sure Weir's going to not take that uh, oh, he did. lightly. Oh, he did. Oh, he did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, I'm sure it's just gonna be two swords and like slice. Anyone mind if I spend a glory? I think we have <laughs> quite a large amount. There's, there's quite a bit of four, glory. so yeah, use four. it. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, that'll be seven with two exalted icons, including one on the raft die. Oh, yes, one on the raft die. There we go. That's what we want to listen to. Okay, um. Let's see. Where's the um? Where's the, I'm gonna find the right bit in the rule book. Where's the uh? Where's the critical hit table when you need it? Um, <laughs> things things you should have automatically able to get to. Uh, damage. There we go. Critical hits. Um, so how much damage? Uh, just roll for your damage first as well. So let's see how much damage you do. One, two, three, four, five, ten. 10. So yeah, that's definitely enough to get through. And then roll a d66 for the critical hit table. Uh, that'll be a 62. <laughs> really? <laughs> Ooh. 62. Unspeakable carnage. A truly grievous strike. The attack is terrifying display of martial prowess. A geezer of gore erupts from the foe's wound. Ragged remnants of the body strewn across the battlefield affect targets of his 1d3 plus 3 mortal wounds, which basically go straight through armor and everything. Uh, you gain glory uh, for every mortal wound. Um, no, you gain glory. Plus 1 mortal wound for every glory you spend. So that's something useful to know in future. If you get this on someone, you can deal even more damage. Mm. But yeah, you simply just step forward with both your swords and just do that and slice yeah. the head clean off their shoulders. Yeah. And they're all dead. They're all pacified. The enforcers are, are either slumped unconscious around you or have missing limbs or missing heads. Well, that escalated quick. Um, they didn't listen to me. No, they didn't, and that's that's what happens, Commissar. Uh, you really proved a point there. Now we seem to have a real problem here if the uh, the enforcers are uh, being corrupted by these psychic influences. Um, uh, Sister Mariana, I, I would recommend that we uh, uh, attempt to exterminate the uh, prison site from orbit. Um, however, that's a bit more of your purview. Do you think? Um, uh, killing all these psychers at once would cause some sort of a mass psychic scream or something like that that could have any uh, ill effects. Um, that is always a uh, a possibility with the filthy psychers, yes. Yeah, okay. So, we, so that... we might want to go in and just, you know, pacify them one at a time. That could take a long time if there's thousands of them. Um, I don't know, Commissar, what do you think? Should we try to get more information about this, or should we just rush in there headlong and try to stop oh. this as fast as possible? No, ID Fortran, go find a, a com and get that information. And uh... Barry, we have the ability to orbital bombardment. Why not use? Much more effective. 100% chance of wiping out cult. 100% chance of also wiping out the planet, which is not what they want to do. That's not our objective. Precision strike. It's more that psychic death scream that'll. Yeah, you know, I mean, blow if up we the call the brains of everybody really? on the planet. If we call the ship, minds not affected. If we called a ship here from the the rogue charter fleet, we could use a lance weapon to just pre eliminate the site from orbit with pretty high precision. Um, however, I'm a little, I'm a little afraid about the, uh, the warp effects that might occur if we did that. Um, or erroneous would probably not take kindly upon us exterminating an entire planet under his orders. No, 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 not, his orders. no, just, no, just not, the one building. just the one site. We could do that <laughs> with the Lance it's underneath, it's underneath everything, though. It's in the lower hive. Well, the spire is, the actual spire from the schematics is a spire that, that, that erupts from the hive itself. So you've got the hive, and then this spire at the lower level comes out on its own. That's why it's referred okay. to as the Black yeah. Lighthouse. Listen, it's this is, it, that can be our backup plan. That can be the backup plan if things go south, okay? But I think we're all in agreement 
for a precision strike. Just if the four style. of us die, then the last one of us will need to call in a, call an aerial the, bombardment. Yeah, call in the Rufio strike. does not count as one of the four of us. Wait, what? If Rufio <laughs> dies, that is an acceptable loss. <laughs> Agreed. What was the name of the, the one that was taken into custody there recently? Before uh, all this stuff was happening. That was, uh, uh, last name was Andros. 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 Skita uh, Skitanio Andros. Okay. Um, ID Fortran, when you go and hack in, see if you can find any information about him, too. I have a feeling this is the person that we need to be looking for. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll walk back to the, the room with all the data slate slotty things. You're going to plug yourself in, boy. I'm going to plug myself message. in. Uh... And see what we get. Come on, R2D2. Yeah, baby. That is three sixes. So three exalted icons, and one of those is on the Rathdos. Whoa. Okay, yeah, you Whoa, um spots. you you send off the message. Uh and you know, you, you've encrypted it so it can be sent uh to the enforcer station. And that's when things start to go terribly wrong for ID Fortran as he's hooked up at this uh, at this <laughs> communication station. Um, I'm not going to roll for this. Oh no, not R2D2. What? Have you just killed me? <laughs> no. Uh, let me just find the right. Um... Oh, you're going to have a vision now. Hmm. Uh, have a mechanical when... brain. Yeah, it's a mechanical it vision. <laughs> a computer that you didn't really possibly check enough whether it was clean, whether it had been used for particular websites. Uh, uh, you don't know. Whoopsie doodle. <laughs> I guess I should have told you guys the computers were messed up. Oh, uh, well. So what I want you to do, David, ID Fortran, uh, yeah. you roll a D66, but the tens dice, the, the tens dice, is a D3. So you're, you're rolling a D36. 36. You know what I mean. Okay. We're so games workshop with our dice rolls here. A D36. Are you mad? What is one of those? <laughs> what do you get? It is a 12. A 12. It's not too bad. Okay. Um, you plug yourself in and you send off that message, and then suddenly all the lights go off. The computer screen goes blank. It's complete darkness. And then you realize something. there's something actually worse than that. Your cogitator banks aren't working. Your op opticals, your optics, your act all your cybernetics, you can't feel anything. You don't know how long it feels like you, time passes in a strange way. And all you sense is that you are a lump of flesh still trapped within a cage of steel and metal, and you can't feel a thing, you can't sense the outside world. Hours, days, weeks, months, <sighs> millennia go by, and you feel like you're screaming inside. It's tearing at you. And then everything turns back on, and everyone's just looking at you as, essentially, for the last five minutes, his uh, voice box has been blurting out essentially what sounds like a dial-up modem screaming to death. And... Like lifting a sword to just put him out of his misery. <laughs> <laughs> and ours. Um, did anybody follow me while this was all happening, or did you just stay off elsewhere, and have I just gone off by myself? And... No, I would have gone. We're all, I would yeah. have gone with you. We're there. Nothing else to do. Oh, shit. Sure. Yeah. Someone um, needs to defrag the computer. Yeah, so I, as soon as I come out of it, automatically de uh, unplug and just kind of step back away from it and just stare intently at it. Um, say some prayers to the Omnissiah. in binary. Yeah, say those prayers to the Omnissiah. Yeah. Get, I get, uh, I've got sacred machine oil. Oh, you're going to start blessing yourself with sacred I'm going to start blessing oil. myself and... The 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 uh, data slate that I was attached to, 
a good plan. A good plan. You watch. Clean, everyone clean. watches the strange machine god rituals that are performed as he blesses it with his sacred oils. Um, right. With that over, what do you want to do? Hmm. You have I'm going to no let this happen, but I should really remember what sacred machine oil does. It allows me to stop complications on machines. And shit, so. Oh, this it would. Well, yeah, fine. Well, this I is a psychic still, thing, isn't it? I would so, have yeah. still done it to you because I'm a dick. Yeah. Um. <laughs> but it's also a psychic thing. It's not the machine thing, yes. is it? No. Um, okay, fine. Uh, what's the plan, guys? What do you want to do next? You you've just witnessed ID Fortran seemingly go wild and berserk, and yet you st hopefully he sent off a message to the enforcers and the planetary defense force or whoever might be your backup. And the only place left for you now to go is to the actual uh, black lighthouse itself and to see what is going on or potentially stop what is going on. I still think we should tell the planetary defense force that there are Xenos running around. Just saying. This is a quick question. Was I look was I sending a message off to the planetary people or looking for plans for the Iron Watch? No, I thought you were sending off a message because Danica has the plans to get to the get to the Iron Watch Tower. Oh, I did have the plans. I thought I just had like a map of the, the district. You've got schematics that, uh, and part of that district is the Iron Watch Tower. Okay. Gotcha. Okay, I missed that part. My yeah. bad. Okay, also, so here, here's a fun fact that you've also learned from the schematics. You know where the Cult of Pleasure was, uh, the district for them? There, that district is only a few levels above where you are currently. Oh, interesting. Ooh, Ooh heresy <laughs> flows downward. Or upwards. So what's the plan then? Where do you want to go to? Do you want to go to the Iron Watch? Do you want to go to this prison for psychers? Hmm. I want to go to the Magos of something just having attacked me. <laughs> all, all those Bring down the entirety of the, the single mechanicus. One. ID Fortran doesn't know where's clean to plug in. <laughs> yeah, I can't, I, I can't call down the Magos. But I want to go back up and go, let's bring down the entire Adeptus Mechanic. It's not, that's wrong. All right. Don't like you, Fortran. We'll find another way to jack, jack you in. Boop, boop. <laughs> Beep, boop. <laughs> right. Anyway, on tone and on theme and mood, what's the plan? Um, um, yes. I think we should go investigate this Psyker prison. It seems like the greatest threat. The greatest fun. I agree. Excellent. Mm -hmm. All right, you let's go. Set off through the desolate um, uh, district, the waterline district, heading, to, following the route, heading down numerous corridors and cramped, uh, you know, paths through other smaller domes until you reach the outside of the hive. And before you is a bridge that le leads all the way over to the Black Lighthouse or the Iron Watch uh, Tower, where they keep the, where the prison is for these criminals. Before you though, are the main gates, which, and, and of course that are before the bridge and they are gothic in nature. There are huge statues of looming priests that stand almost, you know, standing watch for any poor uh, person that is brought into that prison. Interestingly, the statues themselves don't face outwards, they face inwards. They face in looking at the, the tower itself. And while you are there, um, you know, you're looking as you come from your, the route that you've taken that leads you to, you're at a position where you're able to look down onto the bridge and the gates. Outside of these gates, there is a very large crowd. There are all these citizens, these hivers, who you imagine, like those that you've witnessed already, 
are also sleepwalking. But actually they're not. They're all just standing motionless. ID4, trying you zoom in with your optics. They're, they're wearing and giving you a close up. Each one of these citizens is just stood there still, slowly, you know, swaying with the wind. And they're looking in the direction of the lighthouse. Are they looking up at the lighthouse? They're looking up at the tower. Um, if the others can see that they're looking up as well, or. Yeah, I, I, you can point it out to them. I think. Yeah. Does oh. anyone have any uh, macro goggles or whatever they're called, binoculars? No, just ID four trying with his zoom in lenses on his eyes. Um, minor point. I, that's actually an upgrade on the augmentics that I don't have. But you've got minor zoom in. It's not going to make any difference for like. I look down my rifle sight. Yeah, you've rifle got sight. rifle sight. There you go. Yeah, there we go. Um, yeah, so I inform everybody that um, query humans weird, humans swaying, standing still, looking up at tower query. <clears throat> yeah. Weird. Uh, tactical question. Do you think you could guide us around them in a stealthy manner so that we can get into this place undetected? I know none of you are stealthy. Uh, Sister Mariana is stealthy. Almost, no, almost no, none. No, 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 no. <laughs> With big power armor. Wow. Yeah. Um, it does not affect stealth. Super weird. So I weigh that in my head before I answer. Um, I nod. Yeah, it's a nod of approbation. Okay. He's like, all right. Mm, mm. I think I can. Okay. I, uh, Commissar, I recommend we follow Weir. I agree. Um, can you check to see if they don't, if, if there is an access point that these people have? If they're being mind controlled right now, if things go south, I don't want a whole mob coming up well, after us. This is a prison, so we could seal ourselves in which we could just lock I'm, that door behind us yeah i'm yeah. probably gonna be rough but i'm gonna be a git here i want everyone to knowing that everyone has a number the way i say it here is ian is number one on my screen david's number two crystal's number three mike four chick five on your hand i want you to put up a number of either one two three four or five you're gonna vote what happens next to each character <laughs> and we'll see who's got the most votes okay okay uh, what number was mike again <laughs> <laughs> Four, five is chig so chig's waiting uh, for we're me. all literally voting for ourselves so far <laughs> yeah <laughs> i rolled the dice because i'm not mean <laughs> oh oh okay so, and david's again and has chosen mike so it is it is rufio <laughs> Yeah. Um, okay. Here we go. Uh, yeah, uh, it's going to be Sorry. <laughs> right, Rufio. I know you're a beastman, and you have at mm. times mostly suffer from fleas. Uh, <laughs> however, you got something from the air. Just a known fact, you know, as a beastman, you have fleas. Flesh is weak. Yeah. It gets, it gets you smaller. Flesh. Something as it bites you on your arm. And then you look around, and then from a hole, ah. a rusted hole in the wall, you peer at it, you can hear a buzzing, and then a whole swarm of biting insects, biting locusts, fly out of it and start clawing their way all over your body, trying to get into your clothes, into your eyes, into your mouth. Everyone else watches as Rufio starts swatting and ah. throws all these creatures off himself, and there's nothing you can see. Ah, ah, okay, ah, Very Rufio, why are you so weird? Rufio, Rufio. In, his, in his distress, gets ever closer and closer to the to the edge of the platform that you're at the top of. Um, I am going to 
Sister Mariana will grab him and pull him away from the edge. Awesome. And I'm going to get right in his face and I'm going to uh, try to talk him out of it. Go on then. You're going to do some pure intimidation or leadership? Leadership. Yeah. Both nicer than me. Yeah, I thought I was. I thought you guys were just gonna let me fall. I was about this to club a, you. I was about to club you over a, the head. Can I? This is an interesting spend, turn for Sister Mariana. You can spend can wrath. I spend a wrath three roll. Yep. All right. Is everyone I okay with that? Push you. I am not okay with that. <laughs> wrath is your personal stuff, so don't oh, worry about it. Oh, personal. Okay. Oh crap! Right, that ah. is yours. You can't think think was you. I, th I thought it was glory. There we go. All right, I have five uh, icons and one exalted icon. Okay, you you start berating him, start telling him to pull himself together. I'm sure you mostly just like slap him across the face a few times as well because yeah. you know you're a commissar. Um, Rufio, you're you're on your back on the ground. You come to you realize that you've not been bitten that these insects haven't been trying to lay their eggs inside you and you just suddenly realize everyone's looking at like looking at you like you've gone berserk i'm laughing in binary well, um listen it was it was a really convincing vision it really hurt i felt the pain i felt the pain commissar uh that was probably me slapping your face no, I felt it all over my body. Query. Everywhere. And with that, we're going to end there for this session oh. uh, as we uh, are coming up on our time. And that's uh. a nice point where of horror. Um, mm -hmm. I think I'm trying to work out who, who deserves the most XP on this session for some interesting stuff. Who's performed above and beyond... Uh, I'm going to go with David for taking risks of plugging himself into things and experiencing <laughs> the, the everlasting... Yes, just put it. So uh, you get 12, everyone else gets 10 XP mm. for this session. Um, All right. And obviously we will be back uh, in two weeks' time, carrying on this story as no, we won't. head in... No, we won't. No, we won't. We will oh, be no, off we that won't. week. Yeah. We're off that week. We're doing something else. Yes, I we... need to plan for that week. <laughs> we, are do we are doing something else, uh, which we, we will be announcing else. tomorrow. Uh, excellent. Ooh. So we will be back in four weeks' time yep. with uh, more from this story. Obviously, if you want to learn more, please, uh, you know, you've got the Gehenna Gaming podcast. You can catch up on various news there. You can catch up with various news from Dark Days Ready. We have a very interesting episode coming out this week but if you back a certain thing you might hear about it sooner um you can also listen to the dark hammer episodes to find out more about you know worlds of warhammer uh from pupil seven uh we have plans to do an episode soon about vampires in the warhammer fantasy rpg world because vampires oh, okay. are an interesting creature of nagash uh, you said fantasy legions Fancy. I was gonna say, in space. But, uh, there's, well, I mean. we don't need vampires in space. We don't need <laughs> yeah. enough. Um, and uh, what other interesting things are going on podcasting or otherwise? Mm. Uh, what was the most recent episode we put out from Dark Days Radio? Oh, we had the Alien RPG. Obviously, we did that. And yeah. There's lots and lots of cool stuff to check out. Go to Dark Days Radio at Dark Days Radio on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook, and our WordPress blog. Obviously, there's the Heavy Gaming WordPress, well, not WordPress, but blog, website. Website. Lots of cool stuff. Gehandagaming.com, uh, everywhere. Gehanda Gaming. Look yeah, us up. I dropped a bunch of links in chat. www.darker-days.org awesome. for our stuff. Uh, and I think, that that is, I think that is it for now. It is it for now. I do want to say one thing before we go, and I'm pretty sure everyone here is okay with it. Uh, if you live in the United States right now, please stay safe. But um, Black Lives Matter. Yep. Indeed. Yep. yep. Good night, Absolutely. everyone.